spoke a little bit too soon about the sutta that I was going to give tonight. I thought we had a copy with us. We might, but maybe not too. So she's going to go check and see if she can find a copy of it. In, in the uh, middle end sayings, it's only about four pages long. But when you take the ditto marks out, dot, 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 it's 22 pages long. That shows you how much uh, <clears throat> how much repetition there is. So we have to wait just for a minute. There's uh, people that are starting to ask me what book I use and should they get a copy of the books. <coughs> and actually, I would say no, not right now. When people come to practice with me, I have them meditate for one year. And after that year, then I start giving books. And I say, read that, come back, and we'll talk about it. And after that, then I start giving bigger books. <coughs> and then I start loading you up. <laughs> Kama complains she doesn't have enough time to read all the books that I give her. I only give her three or four sometimes a day. <laughs> I walk over the stack of books and say, these are interesting here. <laughs> you should hear her complain. It's great. <laughs>
But when you experience the fruition, you will see uh, dependent origination not just one time. You'll see it arise and pass away. And then you'll see it all arise and pass away, each one of the links. And then you'll see all the links again arise and pass away. If it happens three times very quickly, and then you have the experience of Nibbana, uh, you will be in Anagami. That's the third stage of enlightenment, not, a, not enlightenment, awakening. If it happens four times in a row very quickly, then you will be an Araha, and that is a fruition. Now, for most people, what happens is they will have the path knowledge, and nothing much happens in your meditation right after that. And then they go home and they start doing them a regular meditation, one hour or two hours. And they can be doing things like washing the dishes, taking a shower, whatever. And they will feel their mind just start all of a sudden to get very deep. And then they'll sit down and watch what happens next. And what would happen next would be seeing dependent origination very quickly and then the experience of Nirvana. And with that, all of the fetters will disappear if they're in Araha. That means they don't have a belief in a personal self, in anything. They give up the idea that rites and rituals will lead to Nirvana. They never again have doubt arise in their mind. Never. They know the path. They know this is right. They experience the cessation of all hatred. It will not arise in their mind again. They experience the cessation of all lust. That will not arise in their mind again. They will let go of, and a lot of people will like this, restlessness disappears. No more restlessness. No more sloth and torpor. No more desire to experience higher realms. <coughs> you lose all pride. No pride will ever arise again. And all ignorance disappears. Those are the ten fetters. So when you have the fruition of arahatship, that means that these things will never arise again. You will have complete and perfect understanding of how dependent origination works and how the Four Noble Truths work. Now, what happens for people if they're laymen? and they become an arahat. They have a decision that needs to be made. And I know an awful lot of people don't like this idea, but this is the way it is. You either become a monk and gain the purity of the Sangha, or in seven days you will die from this existence, but you won't be reborn again. So you make a decision what you want to do. The advantage of being around people who are true arahats is great, 
because their understanding of everything that the Buddha taught is very, very good. And the example of the way they live is really um, inspiring. When you attain Nibbana, you don't have any more craving arise ever again. Okay. That's what happens. And again, that's fine. The yeah, okay. Without craving, all of the five aggregates that are held together aren't held together. Okay. And in the Anguttara Nikaya, it describes it this way. Suppose you were to build a sandcastle on the beach. And a wave comes and knocks it down. You can't rebuild that sandcastle in exactly the same way again with all of the grains of sand in exactly the same place. It's impossible. When an arahat dies, there's nothing to hold together the five aggregates because they're always held together with craving and ignorance. There is no more. So when that arahat dies, there is no more becoming. There is no more uh, arising of anything. It's not nothing. It's an unconditioned state. Is it physical death or is physical death? When the, when the Buddha died, a lot of people like to say they prayed to the Buddha to try to get things. He's dead. He's gone. He's not around anymore. His teachings are. The Buddha is not in any of the heavenly realms. It's tricky. No. So you still have five aggregates, but they're not held together anymore. So they're kind of floating around loose by themselves. <laughs> so there's a, wherever anything like that goes, what can I help yeah. to answer? Okay, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. better. But I'm here to tell you that it is still like possible. Yeah. Do you want me to move? No, it's okay. There were women during the time of the Buddha that became Arahat. This should be an advertisement for Toshiba. <laughs> became an Arahat. But he was in bad health, so he just said, well, I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to fade away. But there are other instances in the suttas about laymen that do become arhats. And there are instances of laymen becoming anagamis. That's the third stage. And they stayed laymen. They were reborn in a Brahma Loka. The, there's a special Brahma Loka for uh, Anagamis. And there's five different realms that they can be in. <coughs> they last for real long periods of time. Uh, well, that's 
let's, let's start this way. And Asankaya is the, let's say it's the expansion of the universe. And it expands in years of 10 to 160 zeros in it. The only time beings can live in a universe is when it is expanding. Now, when it gets to a certain point, it will stop for an asaying And then it will contract for an asaying kaya. And it'll get real tight, and then it'll be there by itself for a little while, an asaying kaya. And then the whole thing starts over again. In the suttas, it talks about the expansion and contraction of the universe, and that's what this is talking about. But it's a huge, long length of time. So there's four asankayas, and they equal one mahakapa. A mahakapa is in years 10 with 540 zeros behind it, so it's kind of a long time. There's 560 zeros, I think. Okay. So. Six. 
Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, and I will serve, the monks replied. The Blessed One said this, the six internal bases should be understood. The six external bases should be understood. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. The six classes of contact should be understood. The six classes of feeling should be understood. The six classes of craving should be understood. The six internal bases should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, there are the eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the body base, and the mind base. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six internal bases should be understood. This is the first set of six. The six external bases should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, there are the form base, the sound base, the odor base, the flavor base, the tangible base, and the mind base. So it was reference to this that it was said the six external bases should be understood. This is the second set of six. The six classes of consciousness should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. Dependent on the ear and sound, ear consciousness arises. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six classes of consciousness should be understood. This is the third set of six. The six classes of consciousness should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is eye contact. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is ear contact. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is nose contact. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is tongue contact. Dependent on body and body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is body contact. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is body as mind consciousness, the mind contact, excuse me. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of contact should be understood. This is the fourth set of six. The six classes of feeling should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, eye feeling arises, dependent on the ear sounds, 
here consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. Dependent on the tongues and flavor, tongue consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. Dependent on body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. So it was with reference to this, that it was said the six classes of feeling should be understood. This is the fifth set of six. <clears throat> the six classes of craving should be understood, so it was said, and with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there is eye feeling. With eye feeling as condition, there is eye craving. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. With ear feeling as condition, there is ear craving. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. With nose feeling as condition, there is nose craving. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. With tongue feeling as condition, there is tongue craving. Dependent on the body and the tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. With body feeling as condition, there is body craving. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. With mind feeling as condition, there is mind craving. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of craving should be understood. This is the sixth set of six. The demonstration of not-self. If anyone says the I is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the I is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the I is self. Thus, the I is not self. If anyone says I forms are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of forms are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I forms are self. Thus, 
The I is not self, forms are not self. If anyone says I consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say I consciousness is self. Thus the I is not self, forms are not self. I consciousness is not self. If anyone says I contact itself, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say I contact itself. Thus, I is not self. Forms are not self. I consciousness is not self. I contact is not self. If anyone says I feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the I feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I feeling is self. Thus, the I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self, I feeling is not self. If anyone says, I craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. My self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say I craving is self. Thus, I is not self. Forms are not self. I consciousness is not self. I contact is not self. I feeling is not self. I craving is not self. If anyone says ear is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the ear is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the ear is self, thus the ear is not self. If anyone says sounds are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of sounds are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say sounds are self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self. If anyone says ear consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and Falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear consciousness is self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self. If anyone says ear contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable <clears throat> for anyone to say ear contact is self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self. Ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self. If anyone says ear feeling is self, that is not acceptable. 
The rise and fall of the ear feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear feeling is self. Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self, ear feeling is not self. If anyone says ear craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear craving is self. Thus the ear is not self. Sounds are not self. Ear consciousness is not self. Ear contact is not self. Ear feeling is not self. Ear craving is not self. If anyone says nose is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the nose is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the nose is self. Thus the nose is not self. If anyone says odors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of odors are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say odors are self. Thus the nose is not self. Odors are not self. If anyone says nose consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose consciousness is self. Thus the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self. If anyone says nose contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose contact is self. Thus the nose is not self. Odors are not self. Nose consciousness is not self. Nose contact is not self. If anyone says nose feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose feeling is self. Thus, nose is not self. Odors are not self. Nose consciousness is not self. Nose contact is not self, knows feeling is not self. If anyone says knows craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of knows feeling or knows craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say knows craving is self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self, nose feeling is not self, nose craving is not self. If anyone says the tongue is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the tongue is self. 
Thus, the tongue is not self. If anyone says flavors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of flavors are seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say flavors are self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self. If, <clears throat> if anyone says tongue consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows. My self rises and falls, and that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue consciousness is self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self. If anyone says tongue contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue contact is seen and understood. Since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself, rises. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue contact is self. Thus the tongue is not self. Flavors are not self. Tongue consciousness is not self. Tongue contact is not self. If anyone says tongue feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, tongue feeling is self. Thus, tongue is not self. Flavors are not self. Tongue consciousness is not self. Tongue contact is not self. Tongue feeling is not self. If anyone says tongue craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue craving is self. Thus the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self, tongue contact is not self, tongue feeling is not self, tongue craving is not self. If anyone says body is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the body is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body is self. Thus the body is not self. If anyone says tangibles are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tangibles are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tangibles are self. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self. If anyone says body consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body consciousness is self. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self. If anyone says body contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body contact is self. 
Thus, the body is non-self. Tangibles are non-self. Body consciousness is non-self. Body contact is non-self. If anyone says body feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body feeling is seen and understood, and senses rise and fall are discerned. It would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body feeling is self. Thus the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. Body contact is not self. Body feeling is not self. If anyone says body craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body craving is seen and understood, and senses rise and fall are discerned if we follow. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body craving itself. Thus the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. Body contact is not self. Body feeling is not self, body craving is not self. If anyone says mind is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself, rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind is self. Thus, mind is not self. If anyone says mind objects are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind objects are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind objects are self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self. If anyone says mind consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, Mind consciousness is self. Thus, mind is not self. Mind object, objects are not self. Mind consciousness is not self. If anyone says mind contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind contact is self. Thus, mind is not self. Mind objects are not self. Mind consciousness is not self. Mind contact is not self. If anyone says mind feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind feeling is seen and since its rise and fall are discerned. If we follow myself rises and falls, that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind feeling is self. Thus, mind is not self. Mind objects are not self. Mind consciousness is not self. Mind contact is not self. Mind feeling is not self. If anyone says mind craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind craving is self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind Consciousness is not self. Mind contact is not self. Mind feeling is not self. Mind craving is not self. 
the origin of identity. Now, monks, this is the way leading to the origin of identity. One regards the I thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards forms thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the ear thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards sounds thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the nose thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards odors thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards nose consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards nose contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards nose feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards those craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the tongue thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards flavors thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the body thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tangibles thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mine thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mine objects thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mine consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. 
One regards mine contact thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mine feeling thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mine craving thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. The cessation of identity. Now amongst this is the way leading to the cessation of identity. One regards the I thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards forms thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the ear thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards sounds thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the nose thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards odors thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the tongue thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards flavors thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. 
One regards the body thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards tangibles thus, this is not mine, this is not, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards body consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards body contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards body feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards body craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind objects thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards my consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards my contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards my feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards my craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Underlying tendencies. Monks dependent on the I and forms I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as conditioned, there arises an eye feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant eye feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust underlies within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, laments, weeps, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Monks that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant eye feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards a painful eye feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Monks dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, 
then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful pure feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that here feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Monks, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant ear feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant feeling, ear feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Monks dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling. Felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps, beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the di disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to nose feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Monks, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Monks dependent on tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there arises tongue feeling. Felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps, beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within when one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that tongue feeling, then an underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Monks that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Monks dependent on body intangibles, body consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is body contact. 
with body contact as condition, there arises a body feeling. Felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant body feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful body feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps, beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Monks, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful body feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant feeling, body feeling without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge. This is impossible. Monks, dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there arises a mind feeling felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant body, mind feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful mind feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps, beating, beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that mind feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within Monks, that one should here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful mind feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, Without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. The abandon, abandonment of the underlying tendencies, monks, dependent on the eye and forms eye consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there arises an eye feeling felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant eye feeling, if one does not delight it, welcome it, and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast and becomes, become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. 
monks, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant high feeling, by abolishing underlying tendency to aversion for this painful high feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful high feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Monks, dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant or painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination and disappearance of gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that your feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Monks, that one shall here and now make an end to suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant your feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge. This is possible. Monks dependent on the nose and odors nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling, felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that nose feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Monks, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency in regard to neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge that is possible. Monks dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there arises a tongue feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within when one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast, and becomes
become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, if one understands as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that tongue feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie with anyone. Monks that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant tongue feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Monks dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant. When one is touched by pleasant body feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it, and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful body feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within when one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that body feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Monks that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful body feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is Monks dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meaning of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there arises a mind feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant mind feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it. Then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful mind feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast, and remain, uh, become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, if one understands it as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that mind feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Monks that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion for painful mind feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Liberation. Seeing thus monks, a well-taught noble disciple becomes disenchanted with the eye, disenchanted with forms, disenchanted with eye consciousness, disenchanted with eye contact, 
disenchanted with I feeling, disenchanted with I craving. It becomes disenchanted with the ear, disenchanted with sounds, disenchanted with ear consciousness, disenchanted with ear contact, disenchanted with ear feeling, disenchanted with ear craving. He becomes disenchanted with the nose, disenchanted with odors, disenchanted with nose consciousness, disenchanted with nose contact, disenchanted with nose feeling, disenchanted with nose craving. He becomes disenchanted with tongue, disenchanted with flavors, disenchanted with tongue consciousness, disenchanted with tongue contact, disenchanted with tongue feeling, disenchanted with tongue craving. He becomes disenchanted with the body, disenchanted with tangibles, disenchanted with mind, body consciousness, disenchanted with body contact, disenchanted with body feeling, disenchanted with body craving. He becomes disenchanted with mind, disenchanted with mind objects, disenchanted with mind consciousness, disenchanted with mind contact, disenchanted with mind feeling, disenchanted with mind craving. Being disenchanted, he becomes dispassionate. Through dispassion, his mind is liberated. When it is liberated, there comes the knowledge, it is liberated. He understands birth is destroyed. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more coming to any state of being. That is what the Blessed One said. The monks were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. Now while this, this discourse was being spoken, through not clinging, the minds of sixty monks were liberated from the taints. <sighs> so, I know that that was long, I know that there's a lot of repeating in it, and I also know that there's great advantage to this. So, Please now try not to talk too much and do your say a lot of the things that I repeated over and over and over again. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. Will come up for you. Let's see. Okay. So let's share some merit. May suffering ones be suffering free and fear struck fearless be.